Hi everyone, I'm Jack the Rambling Rack Intern. I hope that you're doing well. I'd like to share with you the first book that I finished reading this year, which is Biophilia by E.O. Wilson. And it was originally published in the early mid 1980s and uh, recollected last year in the first volume Library of America is gonna do of Wilson's collected works. And Wilson is most famous probably as a sociobiologist and as an entomologist. He did some very intensive studies on ants, but he was also fascinated in the ways that uh, organisms or even um, the ecology of a society and of, of a society of organisms. The, probably the key idea within biophilia, this early work from him, I say early in terms of the more popular science he has, is when he writes, humanity is exalted not because we are so far above other living creatures, but because knowing them well elevates the very concept of life. And I think that's a sense that he really believed in wholeheartedly. Uh, he, ha he really had, as a sociobiologist, as an entomologist, he was always pushing to understand and, and look at understanding how humans perceive the world, how humans perceive all of the life that exists in the world, recognizing the perspective that we know so little about it, and yet there is so much potential there, and that's something he gets into in biophilia. Um, and having the ethics of con conservation, making you know it clear that you know, damage to the environment, the, the extinction of species is a horrifying thing, and it's a horrifying thing in terms of not just the immediate, the immediate future, but in terms of the long-term future when we never know, you know, what, what issues we will face. Um, and so when we shut those doors permanently it creates problems. And so he, he has those deep concerns, but he also just has this deep abiding love for the beauty of nature and a keen appreciation for the danger that can exist. Um, there's a whole chapter on snakes. But that, that love, that curiosity is what filters through in his writing and all of his best writings. And Biophilia is probably a great entry point, I think, for a lot of people who've never read any uh, Wilson. He just passed away last year and um, Biophilia is a great entry point. He has a, you know, early on he says, our sense of wonder grows exponentially. The greater the knowledge, the deeper the mystery, and the more we seek knowledge to create new mystery. This catalytic reaction, seemingly an inborn human trait, draws us perpetually forward in, in a search for new places and new life. Nature is to be mastered, but we hope never completely. A quiet passion burns, not for total control, but for the sensation of constant advance. Uh, and so he, he isn't necessarily looking for science to solve all of the problems. And I think that's one of the things that I, I've always appreciated most in Wilson's writing is that he's not looking um, at science as this end all be all answer that it, that it is very much a process. And he regards it as a process of, curi of curiosity, a process of wonder. Um, he emphasizes it's not just about sitting down and memorizing everything that's known. You know, it's rather about pushing that frontier. It's about the new discoveries. And it's about what are, what are the ways in which our sense of wonder can help us push that discovery? What are the ways in which we as curious beings uh, can, can find that fulfillment? Um, and he has a lot of interesting, you know, um, approaches he, he takes us through in this first book. Uh, I should say first book in this collection. And he, he gives some of his experiences and his, he had been a field scientist for a generation before writing Biophilia. So he has experiences uh, from different like small islands, tropical forests that he's gone and explored and found fascinating um, ant species. One in particular is uh, a, a set of ants that he, it can be found like basically underneath inside, like in holes underneath a rock that have this almost metallic green color. Uh, he has this great description of the the lifespan of a single queen um, ant and how she would be born and go start her own new colony and, and what that would be like. Uh, he has a chapter on like the birds of paradise. He has one on snakes and growing up um, in the southeastern U.S. he had a plenty of experiences with snakes. Um, but so, so he filters all of these experiences in but it's always with this question around wonder, this question around um, what is that connection? Like as humans, if we can perceive life, if we can perceive the environment, if we can perceive life on earth, what responsibility comes with that? And it leads to some uh, fascinating ideas around conservation and critical ideas around conservation, but it also leads to some just fascinating uh, concepts around how humans think. And this was uh, another sort of tack in that sociobiology he was interested in. He writes, the mind is biologically prone to discursive communication that expands thought. 
Mankind, in Richard Rorty's expression, is the poetic species. The symbols of art, music, and language freight power well beyond their outward and literal meanings. So each one also condenses large quantities of information. And he goes on and gives um, examples of this. Uh, the symbols of art gather human experience into novel forms in order to evoke a more intense perception than others. Human beings live, literally live, if life is equated with the mind, by symbols, particularly words, because the brain is constructed to process information almost exclusively in those terms. And, he, and that's within a chapter entitled The Poetic Species. And he's fascinated by these ideas that science could inform art. Art should inform science. The, 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 the sense of pushing forward that an artist has as a creator um, is something that a scientist should have. And he, he, uh, he identifies, you know, you, you need to have the, the diligence of a clerk being able to sift through data and being very diligent and honest with that but also have that sense of inspiration and curiosity that are true in, in artists as well. And so to find a scientist willing to embrace so many different aspects of the way our minds can be curious, the way our minds can wonder, and then to combine that with his deep understanding of science, his uh, deep appreciation for the environment is just a fascinating you know, book to read. Um, and then towards the end, he notes, I've argued in this book that we are human in good part because of the particular way we affiliate with other organisms. And he uh, goes on, to the extent that each person can feel like a naturalist, the old excitement of the untrammeled world will be regained. I offer this as a formula of re-enchantment to invigorate poetry and myth. Mysterious and little known organisms live within walking distance of where you sit. Splendor awaits in minute proportions. And that certainly is, you know, an idea that I try to foster uh, for my, my own self and with our daughters, this, this sense of being curious, being curious around what's in the backyard, being curious about what we see in the front yard um, and, and being curious, you know, when, when we're outside, trying to find the little pieces uh, that can, can stimulate our minds and can cause us to perhaps consider the world and consider perspective in a different way. So I would highly recommend just reading from Wilson um, and Biophilia whether in this volume or on its own, is just a great short uh, intro to the, the unique mind that Wilson had. As a scientist, you know, writer of science, <laughs> a scientist writer, I, I will say I found Lauren Isley, I think, to be an even stronger proponent of that, that sense of poetry that exists in life, that sense of that, that creative spark, that inspiration, that wonder that can exist. Um, I think Lauren Isley possessed that just as well as Wilson. I think he captured it slightly better in his writing um, and, and had a, a real sense of poetry in his writing. Wilson just shares just <laughs> such an infectious curiosity. Uh, another great, you know, um, natural historian would be Stephen Jay Gould. His essays uh, have been published in a whole series of about like 10 or 11 volumes. And those make for great, great reading. And, and I would say that Wilson's writings are probably at a slightly more scientific level than um, Isley's and maybe slight, he uses probably more species names than uh, Stephen Jay Gold, but he, uh, and he probably goes into theory at a deeper level than Gold. But if you've really enjoyed Stephen Jay Gold and you've never tried out Wilson, I would certainly recommend that. Wilson did write a uh, novel, Ant Hill, which uh, was a gift from John, uh, who on Instagram is known as Mupplewick. And I'm really looking forward to getting into this this year. Uh, and there are, you know, there's no need to have read The Origin of Species in order to appreciate any one of E.O. Wilson, um, Lauren Isley, Stephen Jay Gould. All of them are fantastic. But with Wilson's deep abiding curiosity and interest with ants, it did make me off, uh, send me off to reread Line Engine versus the Ants, one of my uh, favorite Favorite stories from school, but also just a an almost comical story in terms of uh, <laughs> what happens. That was written by Carl Stevenson, uh, but I have it in this Great Tales of Terror and the Supernatural about this group of ants that's going to wipe out a farm and what's the farmer going to do. So uh, let me know if you've read Wilson, if there are other um, you know uh, science writers you enjoy, particularly uh, uh, writers on ecology, um, biology. Wilson was writing in the aftermath, of course, of Rachel Carson's fantastic Silent Spring, a critical work. Um, but he, he certainly spent much of his life trying to continue 
uh, many of those those ideas around conservation and responsible um, you know ecology and consumption that she was pushing forward um, earlier so hope everybody's having a great year thanks